Thanks for watching NTD Business coming up tonight. More turbulence in the banking sector. Shares of Swiss bank Credit Suisse tanked today after a key backer said it can't offer more help. The Swiss central bank had to step in. In the aftermath of Silicon Valley Bank's fall, there's debate over whether the bank should be bailed out or not. An investment strategist argues that we should let the bank collapse without any help. Short sellers profiting from the collapse of regional banks taking advantage of the sell-off in shares. And artificial intelligence has just become a lot more intelligent. Chat GPT version 4.0 is out, far smarter and more capable than its predecessors. A big boost to the AI revolution. Google is competing heavily with Microsoft and artificial intelligence. What are they doing and what are their new releases? That and much more coming up on NTD Business. Great to have you with us. Don Ma here. On Wall Street, the Dow and the S&P closed lower as problems at Credit Suisse revived fears of a banking crisis. More on that in just a moment. The Dow fell 281 points or 0.9 percent. S&P lost 27 points or 0.7 percent. Nasdaq rose 6 points, 0.1 percent. The troubles in the banking sector show no signs of stopping, seems like. Shares in Swiss bank Credit Suisse plunged today, hitting a record low. This comes after its biggest shareholder, the Saudi National Bank, says it couldn't put in any more money. The Swiss Central Bank later stepped in, saying it would provide liquidity to Credit Suisse if needed. The Swiss Central Bank also assures that Credit Suisse meets the capital and liquidity requirements. And there is no contagion risk for Swiss banks. Credit Suisse shares closed down 14 percent on the Nasdaq today. What caused the initial drop was that earlier today, Saudi National Bank said it can't increase its stake in Credit Suisse anymore due to regulations. The chairman of the bank did say, though, they're satisfied with Credit Suisse's financial turnaround plan, despite its recent scandals. But apparently that didn't stop investors who were quick to sell on bad news. They're also concerned about possibly more hidden trouble in the banking system as this comes right after the two bank collapses here in the U.S. And now we have Lance Roberts here, Chief Investment Strategist at RIA Advisors. Now, thanks for joining me, Lance. Um, I'm sure you're following the Credit Suisse uh, story. Let me just get your quick reactions there. What are your thoughts? Well, look, what's happening with Credit Suisse, of course, uh, one of their, their, well, their biggest investor is basically pulled out, so, so, to, so to speak. Um, but Credit Suisse has had problems for quite some time. Uh, you know, this is not a new thing for Credit Suisse. They've had trouble with different derivatives, et cetera. So, you know, this is one of those banks that has, has been in trouble previously and is, has been kind of struggling along over the last several months, really. And this is just kind of the culmination of, of really a period of trouble for the bank. But, um, you know, unfortunately, this comes on you know, right here at the same time that we're talking about Silicon Valley Bank and Republic National Bank, et cetera. And it's just all kind of falling into this umbrella of financial stress. And let me get you to weigh in. Do you feel like there should be a bailout here for Silicon Valley Bank? No. Um, look, we have capital, you know, capitalism is is come under attack a lot over the last couple of years. And, you know, we blame capitalism for wealth inequality, et cetera. And that's not really capitalism. Uh, That's corporatism that's causing that problem. And part of corporatism comes from the fact that we don't allow capitalism to function. And when capitalism is allowed to function, that means there's winners and there's losers. And that means that sometimes we have to allow banks to fail. And again, Silicon Valley Bank is getting bailed out. Most of the are, are getting supported, but most of those depositors are very rich corporations, very rich individuals that have money there. And, you know, there that's a risk when you deposit more money into a bank than what you are covered by FDIC insurance. That is a risk that is on you as an investor or as a depositor. You should know better and you should diversify your deposits accordingly. And so, no, every time we go in to bail out or to support or to guarantee deposits, yes, there is a very negative context to not doing that. Yes, it is going to impede economic growth. Yes, it is going to cause pain in the economy. But if you ever want to get the economy back to where it is functioning properly without needing bailouts, every time we have a crisis in the economy, you've got to allow capitalism to work out. I know that's a harsh statement. People disagree with that. But it's just the function of how capitalism has to work in order to be healthy and to benefit the economy as a whole. So if we're speculating about how how many basis points we're going to see next meeting, If we take into consideration that the Fed uh, cares about the banking sector much more than inflation, if it doesn't hike at all, 
Should we be concerned? Is that a signal for something that's that's very serious that's happening in the banking sector? Yeah, what I think we'll see is I think we'll see the Fed hike 25 basis points, um, and I think we'll see them soften their language in terms of their inflation fight. I think they'll definitely make a mention of financial stability, and they'll make notice of what happened with the banking system. They, they'll say that they're watching this very closely. They're monitoring incoming data, et cetera. But I still think they'll hike 25 basis points, because if they didn't, if they come in at no, uh, at, at no rate hike, and mention financial instability, the immediate response from the market is going to be there's more trouble here than we realize. And that could really cause a, a much larger sell off in the market, you know, as opposed to what everybody thinking. Everybody's been hoping that, oh, the Fed's going to pause or pivot. And that means that's great for stocks. Never in history has the Fed paused rate hikes or pivoted rate hikes where that was good for stocks. Because when the Fed pauses or pivots after a rate hike campaign, that's because they've broken something either economically or financially. So, if the Fed would pause or even cut rates, which is I don't think it's going to happen, but if they did, that signal tells you that there's a lot more wrong with the system than what we currently realize. So if the Fed uh, keeps uh, hiking, um, what are the risks that we're, we should be looking out for for regional banks going forward? Well, yeah, again, you know, the, the risk that you're looking for really is, is ultimately credit. Um, and it's not just necessarily regional banks. And, and they're just the ones that are right now, they're kind of in the focus. But remember, 20 percent of the Russell 2000, these are these small cap, cor you know, these smaller cap corporate uh, corporations that are in that index. About 20 percent of those rely on debt in order to meet funding requirements, et cetera, for the companies. They're, there's what we call zombies because they, they rely on debt to stay alive. And with higher interest rates, that makes it much harder for them to refinance their debt. And there's a big debt wall that's coming up this year, next year, that has to be rolled over and refinanced. And that's going to have to be done at higher rates. So the, the things you're looking for, not just necessarily in the banking system, but also looking at consumer credit delinquencies and defaults, as well as corporate defaults and corporate bankruptcies. So all of those will tell you those are all good leading indicators that the economy is starting to, to break down at some level. I see. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Lance, today for your valuable insight. It was a pleasure speaking to you, as always. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Short sellers scored big over the past week, betting that regional bank shares would decline following the collapse of SVB and Signature Bank. According to research firm S3 Partners, short sellers may have raked in over $2 billion in the past three sessions, taking advantage of a sell-off in regional bank shares. Short sellers profit from stock declines by borrowing shares of companies they believe are overvalued, then selling them and buying them back at a lower price later. S3 says short sellers of those banks are sitting on massive profits, but have no way to realize those profits at the moment. It said these short positions will stay open until their shares are delisted and worthless. S3 told clients that SVB and Signature Bank are among the top five most profitable shorts among regional banks this year. 